say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to our outdoor country kitchen. How are you today, Nikki? Starving, thank you. You're looking ravishing as usual. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know what, uh, it's Father's Day. It is, that's right. So Father's Day, you should eat Father's Day-ish stuff. Good idea. Don't you think? I think so. So, you know, when you think about Father's Day, you think about a big slab of ribs. Mm -hmm. Now, I gotta say, we always try new restaurants. We kept hearing about a place um, on Main Street, mm -hmm. Carson's on Main. In Lexington. In Lexington. And it's, uh, you know, I kept on hearing about the visuals. I know a guy who plays down there who's a very talented mm -hmm. musician. But how was the food? It was really, really good. good. So, and nothing fancy smancy. You don't have to be dressed fancy. Right. We're going to visit them and we'll do a little cooking with them in the kitchen at some point. They have good food. But I can't always talk because my mouth is watering and I'm thinking about the ribs they had. They did have really good ribs. Oh my goodness, a little spicy bourbon. That was really it good. It was absolutely delicious. So I started thinking what happens when you don't get enough ribs. This was an appetizer. I could have made a, I could have made a meal right, out of it. Right, I was full of meat. The two that. of us. Right, it was good. So, I thought, though, what happens when you're really hungry? Really hungry. And you, you make get a huge rib. slip. <laughs> so we found this cut of uh, French cut pork right. ribs. Look at that. That's a neat yeah, looking. That's a big like honk that. and hunk of pork. So being that it's Father's Day, in honor of fathers who like this sort of stuff, we're going to do a little something with some seafood. Okay. Something you like, too. Mm -hmm. I brought your muscles in on this. Oh, good. I love muscles. Now, last week, we fired a smoker up. And it was so good, we had a brisket, and so many people responded with that. Well, hey, I think we might try this again. You like to It's cook already there. sitting there. That's right. Why not? Just look at that for just a minute. Now, that's going to shrink up. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a big bunch of ribs? That looks really good. Are you good. looking forward to that? that? This is not for me. All right. <laughs> now, I encourage you to make your own dry rub. There are so many out there that you can buy from the store. Right. But I encourage you to try. I have several different ones that I use that are homemade, and I won't... Everybody's got their own. Right. I won't burden they you like with mine right now, but there are plenty of things you can do. Now, what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to bring him over here, and we're going to take some dry rub, and we're going to... Remember we did this last time? That's right. Load it up. But we're not going to do any mustard on it, if you okay. will. Turn that over. Now, we're going to always cook this. For the most part, we always take our fat side up. But for a short period of time, towards the end of this, we're going to turn it the other way around okay. so we can put some barbecue sauce. Now, people yeah. say, well, how can you keep this moist? Well, the key is to keep some water in your smoker, and that layer of fat is going to help you with your moisture. Now, what else is going to happen is once this cooks for about, oh, I don't know, six or seven hours, we're going to turn it upside down and put some barbecue sauce on one side, your favorite yeah. barbecue sauce. I'll come back in another hour, boom. Poured over, and that last hour really poured on the top, and it seals that up. And then you automatically have that barbecue sauce on there. We got the best dads in the world. Yes, we do. Now, you have seen both of our dads on our show. My dad is Jerry, yours mm -hmm. is Bill, or as most people know him, Wild Bill. That's right. He gained that reputation by mm -hmm. being out of control. Kind of wild. <laughs> you know, uh, we're both lucky to still have our parents, but I will take just a second to say that we told you about. Bill having surgery. For those who have dealt with dementia and Alzheimer's, we want to pray for Grandma Nikki because Grandma Nikki's the caretaker mm -hmm. and he has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it's getting really rough. Yeah, she's having a hard time. We know what it's like. We have seen it firsthand to see somebody robbed of their dignity, of their very thought process. Right. You know, it's very sad and it's very upsetting and we know lots of people have dealt with it. Right. So it was just a few years ago. We were visiting with your mom and dad. They were here. And 
Did we know then? You kind of could tell that we, Dad was we having kind a hard of suspected. Time. And I thought, you know, we, we need to sit down and, and grab some memories and keep those. Something that you might do yourself. Everybody has a phone now mm -hmm. where they can, if they sense that somebody's kind of slipping back a little bit, grab some memories while you got them. Do it on your phone, get, do it on some kind of camera because we have a precious memory now. Mm -hmm. Now, I talked to Bill. I was interested in, in, in the old refrigerators and how right. they kept things cool. You know, they would go out and cut these huge blocks of ice out and put them in cellars and, and right. people would sell ice. And he talked about the ice truck, not mm -hmm. the ice cream truck, but the, the ice, ice truck. truck. Let's talk to Wild Bill and share a memory. You know what, we got the uh, oil lamp burning and it's time to talk about the old days. You know, when I was a kid, I was always interested in things that happened way back when. I wish I'd have set my great-grandparents down and, and taken a lot of their memories and, and somehow uh, talked about that. We got Wild Bill here, Nikki's dad. Did you ever hear though, remember when we were kids, the, the, the people go by with the ice cream cones, they'd sell them, they'd ring a bell, ring a bell. Oh yeah. yeah it'd be followed about 20 kids behind them. Yeah. Well, when the ice truck went through, the same thing. Every, all the kids were following. Ice truck. The ice truck. Now see, that's what, a lot of people are gonna think, ice cream truck, no. This You're was, talking about, back in the day, it was ice. Refrigeration was not that's done all they had with the, electricity. You had an ice box. And they have a big thing inside loaded with ice in the winter and it never, it never melted. And they would come in and just haul pieces out. So they would cut like pieces of the yeah. lake out, put yeah. it in an insulated building. They bring it in pieces, all cut certain pieces. Yeah. And they loaded the truck, and when they took it out, they brought it to your house. They would come in and set it in your ice packs. And you said the kids would follow because they wanted a little piece of ice for a they treat. They were following the truck for for because they had to chip it sometimes to make it fit. It was everybody did it. Wow. And what would it last? Maybe a week in the in the, in the uh, ice I don't box. Know. All I know, it melted and the water went outside. And the truck, you said it was always leaking water. Always leaking water. Because too, the ice yeah. was always melting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traveling yeah. down the road. I get. Did you grow up on the farm, or did you kind of move to Garden no, City? No, we spent our summers there when we were little kids. We went there when we were little babies. So we were born in '35, and we. Uh, you were a twin. Twins. Now you mentioned that there was a kitchen, and there was a summer kitchen. The summer kitchen was in when the hot summer, but the kitchen it would heat the house. You got up in the morning, you'd go to the kitchen where they were frying the eggs. Oh, there was... There was well, probably wood burning stoves. Well, yeah, wood burning stove, and they would make the wood burner stove, they'd bake stuff in it. That was not heat in the house. That's the only heat they had. But in the summertime... In the summertime, they went out and back. Just like a door here, and this room here was the summer kitchen. They did all the cooking out here, and none of the heat went inside. Right. Just the meal. Now, what do you remember uh, as a kid growing up on the farm? What did you get... What kind of food did you get on the farm that you didn't get back in Garden City? Oh, we got, well, in the summer we got green beans and peas and everything. And I used to go out and pick blackberries with them and we'd make blackberry jam, all that stuff. We had gardens, they had chickens, we, we, they raised chickens. It was a self-reliant home they, and they had cows and they butchered, but it, it, the food was delicious. You know, your dad grew up during the Depression and during that time... That's right. They, lost was three, they had three farms, they lost two. Wow. And during that time, food was scarce. They they did a lot of canning, like I do. You know, you, you know, we, we you can't freeze. You just freeze your green beans and freeze and put them in the bank. That they never the bank the bank. Now and that's what we talk about. It was kind of a root cellar. It's a root, but it's a bank, and you had all your stuff, all your canned goods were here, all your potatoes and everything. And you go in, open the door, go down in, and then bring out what you want. Nothing froze. So it's down in the ground, so yeah. it probably keeps a constant temperature of 50, 50 degrees at the max. Yeah. yeah. And so they kept all the vegetables. Everything was the fresh. The bank. The bank. And, uh, and then they used to smoke stuff, like with your smoking thing. Uh -huh. They would smoke the hams and stuff and hang them out, where they were out there forever. Yeah. Just cut them. And then they bring them out and cut them and yeah. them, put them back in there. Yeah. What were your chores on the farm? Well, when we were little boys, our chores was just to entertain them. But no, they taught me how to milk. Wow. And I used to run the, the what do you call it, separator. You, when you kept the, oh, the cream separator? Cream, it did that. We cranked that. Did you ever that. turn butter? Yeah, and butter. Yeah, and then we had the buttermilk, all that stuff. My fondest memory was picking blackberries with my aunts. Now, did she make the jam and show, that's, you that's still right. make jam. She yeah. showed you how to do yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, we put in a garden. I'd go out and pick tomatoes, and we'd pick beans. And my favorite dish was green beans with ham. <laughs> <laughs> it was delicious. Now, we're sitting here, we're getting us ready to go, 2.37, about 11, 10, 11 hours, depending on your smoker. 
Um, but a few years ago, my dad, when we were kids, he'd always say, hey, what, what do you guys want for dinner? We'd say, we want your world's greatest cheeseburgers. <laughs> well, he, he made them out of venison. I thought there's no way he can match that taste out of ground venison, right. which we shoot every year, and we have plenty of ground venison. What a great way to utilize your venison. Here's dad, here's a little clip of dad making his world famous cheeseburgers, which are just as good with they properly are. processed venison. They are. All right, of course, mom had to start things out as usual, but dad's gonna follow up with the main course. These are the world's greatest cheeseburgers. Exactly. Mm. And we can vouch for that because, do you remember when we said, dad, please make the world's greatest cheeseburgers? <laughs> and you would. All right, let's talk about the world's greatest cheeseburger and how simple it is, but the fact the way that you make it. Now, a lot of people like White Castles, but a lot of people can't eat too many of them because strange things happen to them when they eat mass quantities of these things. And mm -hmm. some people put dehydrated onions. Those kill me. These are fresh onions. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us, if you will, give us an overview of how you start. Okay. <clears throat> thing is, these go so fast, you have to have everything right ready. So I've got the hamburger balls made up, I've got the buns buttered, I've got the uh, onions chopped, the cheese ready where I can get right hold of it quick. Dill pickles, room temperature. Dill, dill pickles, room temperature, salt and pepper, handy. But I got the idea from a small restaurant where they had a lot of uh, customers and they had to serve them very quickly and uh, the hamburgers would, would cook instantly. They would go together instantly. And uh, these, to be world's greatest cheeseburgers, they have to be eaten immediately. Yes, they do. Right, right off the grill. And we never have a problem with it. Remember us sitting no. there waiting for the next one? <laughs> <laughs> now that's what, just a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Yeah, something what like that. What you're thinking, okay, that's not a whole lot of meat, but that's exactly the amount of meat that you need right. to make the world's right, greatest cheeseburgers. It, it cooks up some and it'll just about take care of a bun. Hey Dad, look here. I found this in an antique store. It used to have a rooster on it, but I put it in the dishwasher. That's an old hamburger press. Mm -hmm. Put one in there, see what you think. You can just flatten the heck out of them. I think that'll work great. You like that? Yeah. Just the right. Kind of makes it uniform. Got the right uh, flatness. How about that? Now this, this fellow in the restaurant, when he flattened the hamburgers, he threw one on the grill and he took the spatula and he went and it was flat. That's how quick he did it. He had that muscle memory. He'd been doing it for so right, long. Right. Everything was exactly everything. one after the other. Quick and perfect, yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some stuff and help you take everything over because I'm dying for okay. hamburgers. Basically, you have your skillets hot. Two, at least two skillets, but you put the hamburgers in the skillet, flatten them out as flat as you can get them, put the buns in the other skillet so they can be toasting, and as soon as the hamburger gets done on one side, or while, it, while it's cooking actually, you put the onions on top and push the onions Smoosh them in. into the burger. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you can see when the one side gets done, you quickly flip the burger to the other side. <clears throat> when you do that, you put the cheese on, mm -hmm. and uh, and then when the whole thing is finished, the bun should be finished, the hamburger finished. You uh, take it out, put it on the bun, put the pickles on it, and put it on a plate ready to. Eat. You know what? Uh, anytime you fix these, people just start showing up from off the street, wherever they are, and they start grabbing. It's hard to keep everybody away from, them, <laughs> but but you know for. I mean, I was wanting to have at least three or four of these, but I think we should commence to eating them right now. Those are the world's greatest cheeseburgers. You know, most times when you eat a hamburger, you want some ketchup or mustard. I think that would take away from this. Mm -hmm. Try this. If you don't like it, we'll come to your house and beat you up and take your hamburger. Mmm, mmm, mmm. No, no, Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's good. Good job. Four red seabirds. All right, we're getting ready to pop this in, but first, take a look at this. If you look and see this boiling over here in the background, 
What I did to get things started is I took a whole kielbasa, mm -hmm. half a lemon, and I cut it up. We're gonna have some celery, we got some onions that we just cut into rings, we have some corn, and potatoes, some small red skin potatoes. Yeah, I love potatoes. With just enough water to cover. Then we came back with some shrimp stock. Okay. And you can keep this in your refrigerator for a couple days. I wouldn't keep it too long. Right, it would get nasty. It can, it can get messy. Yeah. Now, we're gonna take an amber beer. If you want that, you can do that, fine. If not, I'm gonna take some Tony's, put in here, I'm gonna put a little bit of Old Bay seasoning. We're gonna let that simmer. Now, at the last minute, we're gonna take our shrimp, which is still in the shell. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something about shrimp that a lot of people don't pay attention to. If you get it fresh, which we did off, right. off the truck, that shell contains a lot of flavor. If you cooked a lobster and it's without a shell, it wouldn't have that flavor. Right. So you get a lot of the salt and the, and the, the essence of the ocean to me right. if you leave it in that shell. So we're gonna leave them in the shell then we're gonna put some mussels in there. That's I the last mussels. thing that we're gonna add, because that's we're gonna make sure that we're cooked down. We gotta, right. we gotta do this and make it all come together at the same time. So we're getting very close to bringing everything together and having a wonderful dinner. Yeah. Now, here's something that people have been asking about, and this is gonna be a standalone segment now. Not too long ago, we cooked some bread in a 10-inch pan. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to do, it's so tasty. In a little while, that's the, you're going to want to sop this up. You know how we yeah. always have oh, this you gotta have bread. you got to have bread. So we're going to show you how to make homemade bread in a Dutch oven. The best homemade bread you can possibly have in, in a Dutch oven. Very simple. But we got to have some bread cut up right. so we can sop okay. in our juices. So we're going to show that in a little bit. But first of all, let's get our pan going over here because everything's okay. about to come together. So we got our shrimp and our already pre-cooked mussels, but Yum. we're gonna pop them in there with our already stewing ingredients. Yeah. Look at that. I'm excited. Here's your Got your starch, your potatoes. Mm -hmm. You've got to have corn. your potatoes. That's fresh shrimp. Yum. Your mussels. A little bit more pork, a little kielbasa on the side. And I like the way this looks. Look at, look, here's the way this should happen. Watch it. Look at oh, that. Oh, wow. Look how it just falls apart. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's good. Tender. That's really tender. Moist, falling apart. Look at that. That's the You're best just part. It off. I thought we were going to need a knife. Don't even need a knife. Mm. Here. Wow. You gotta have your muscle. The good thing about eating outside is when you when you get your muscle out. Mm-hmm. Don't over shoulder okay. like that. I like that. <laughs> and then you just throw it right when you're peeling your shrimp. You know what? So many people are asking. Let me show you a, a shortened version of how easy it is to put together your own bread in a Dutch oven. This is probably one of the best breads that we've ever had. Delicious. Quick and easy. All right, here's the basic ingredients. It's really so simple. You got two cups of Weisenberger, just white flour, and then some white wheat flour or some wheat flour. You're gonna need a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and a cup and a half of warm water, two and three quarters teaspoons of yeast. I come back and get that working with just a pinch of sugar. About a teaspoon of salt in here. Let that work. All right, now my yeast and water has set for five minutes. I'm going to take my th three cups of assorted flowers and I'm just going to gently mix them up. Very quickly, it becomes nice and doughy. Now I'm going to take this, and the most lengthy part of the process is the rising of the flour. I'm going to cover this. I'm going to take it inside where it's a little bit warmer. I'm going to let it set for about four hours. All right. So our four hours has passed. Now we're gonna pull our dough out of here. And you're gonna see pretty quickly that we got some good looking dough right here. 
I'm not going to do much to it. I'm just going to work it a little bit. Now here's the part where you're probably thinking, okay, I've never cooked in a Dutch oven. If you're a pro, you know the deal. You can almost eyeball your coals and know exactly how much you have to have for 300 degrees, 350 degrees. In this case, we need about 425 degrees. So how do you do that? Well, look here at this book. The handy little lodge book tells you right here, Dutch oven cooking. This is a 12 inch. If I want a 425 degree temperature, which I do for bread, this is gonna cook about 40 minutes. And you can do this with coals from wood. It makes it a lot easier if you start out with charcoal briquettes. To get a 425 degree temperature, we need 10 on the bottom, 21 on the top, which we've done. I've also taken some lard and put in the bottom of that pan. Now I'm gonna take my dough, and see how nice that looks? And put it back in the bowl, and I'm gonna let it rise for another half hour. While we have that last half hour of dough to rise, that's when we get our pan preheated and ready to go. All right, the half hour has passed. We're gonna do one more little roll around here. We'll take our bread, get it in a nice little round shape, and we're gonna pop it directly in the pan. Here's our future bread. And we are good to go. Now keep an eye on your briquettes. If you see them burning down, you can replace them. And give that a bit. Now we'll go see what Nikki's doing in the kitchen. Wonderful, that wonderful good. Dutch oven bread. You, can, you cannot hardly go wrong with it. Now, here's what I always like to do as soon as it comes out while it's still smoking hot. Now, look at that. Mm. Wow, that's nice and hot. I'm going to go ahead and put some butter on top of that and let that soak in so it'll kind of make it moist. And look at that. Now, wow. I've been working on this all day. You know what? I'm going to switch hats real quick because I don't want to bang you with this. Look at here. Wow. How much bread did you make? I've been making bread all day long. <laughs> you know, once you get started and you start messing around with it, this is a different type of bread. It's got a little more wheat in it. Oh, I can't hardly wait. Do we have to wait for soup? We can have a little taste. Just, just a bite to, to hold, hold this over. over. Yeah, I need a little bite. Let's have a little bite. Yeah. All right, we said we we're going to have a little bit while our pumpkins are boiling, but you know what? Let's split this in half. Put some butter on that. Is that for you, not for me? Mmm. Mmm. Look how, look how nice that is. Oh, it's nice. Well, you can make some, oh, some fresh cheese with that. All right, let's set the breads out of the way before we eat them all. The pumpkin's going, and obviously we have a something sweet coming up. Yes, let's move this out of the way. Who was that guy with the great big cowboy hat that you were just, just talking to in the cabin there? Are you going to ever get a haircut? You want me to? I was thinking about going wild man. I kind of like wild man and the berry look. You still got the berry look going. I like that. You like that? Yeah, but you Rock know. Rock and roll 70s look. That's right. <laughs> Whatever mm. you think. I like it all. I'll tell you what I do think. I think this is a good Father's Day dinner. Amazing. And I also think that we've got maybe 10 gazillion other recipes that uh, you might want to check out. If so, where would you go? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Recipes, how to's. We try to answer as many people's questions mm -hmm. as possible, but how to build a smokehouse. Right. How to do this, how to do that. Wonderful, fun stuff. And again, millions of views from around the world. Uh, again, I'm bragging on our, our cutting up a beef piece, but over, right. over, over a million hits on that one and still climbing. Also, if you've not joined our Facebook family, that's a pretty simple thing to do. Mm -hmm. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, click like. That's all you gotta do, hit the like button. Boom, you're in. You don't have to do any fancy smancy stuff. And we can talk, we can share recipes, we can show pictures. We show pictures around the farm, all kinds of stuff. All right, now, when you're checking a pork or you got something in the smoker, you don't want to open it very often because right. you lose all that moisture in there. But when you, you do want to check it every now and then to make sure it's not overdone. You don't want it to lose that moisture. Right. So check it. If your bones are falling out, you're ready to go. Now, you got company come over an hour after that, don't worry about it. Wrap it up in aluminum right. foil. Put it in a cooler, like a little, the smallest cooler that you right. can possibly find to con 
completely surround that, it will stay hot and it yes. will kind of sweat out in there. Makes it and better. it won't be any worse two hours later than it was I right think it then. tastes better. And, it, and it, plus it rests mm -hmm. and it's just absolutely delicious. So how'd you like your dinner? I'm still chewing. I it's guess delicious. I should say my dinner. It's, it's delicious. Father's Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. Our half hour has flown by, so that means it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. Let's just, good job. Let's just chow. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.